Hello everyone! Time for another Unity tutorial. Uh, you'll see here some crazy characters. It's for a uh, game I'm making for iOS uh, and Android called Arena Champions. It's a, a game where you have teams of characters that fight each other in an arena. Imagine that. So everything you're going to see here is, of course, uh, just stand-in artwork and stand-in gameplay. Things are, are going to change. But basically the gameplay is this. You have this team of characters against a team of enemy characters. And what I wanted to do was create something that was reminiscent of the combat system found in the old uh, Bioware games like Baldur's Gate and uh, Icewind Dale, stuff like that. So, you have a system here where you can scroll the camera around here, and if you select on a character, for example, and uh, give them somewhere to move, if you pause, you can pause and give orders any, anywhere you want. So, for example, I could pause, I could... I'll redirect this character over here. When I unpause, the character will follow the new orders. So it's pause and give orders. So that way, the gameplay is in real time, and yet you're able to pause, uh, you know, look over the situation and develop a strategy without feeling too rushed. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you how I did that. How I implemented the kind of that uh, uh, two-state button, and how I implemented the pause and unpause effect. All right. So here is the um, bit of script that I use to implement that pause and unpause button inside of a script that I call GUI script, all right? It's where I've got all my other uh, GUI stuff is, okay? So it's inside of the on GUI uh, function that's in the script, all right? And let's go through it bit by bit. Uh, the first thing I did was just simply a, a thing for uh, to make my uh, UI look good. I created a skin called clear button skin. As you'll notice here, I have two different skins. I have one that controls these buttons here and these buttons down here. I have kind of this background image that goes for all these buttons. I didn't want that for this button. I wanted this button to have no background at all. So I just created a skin and uh, there's the My Button skin. You'll see that the button has this kind of background behind it. And then if I look for the Clear Button skin, you'll see that the background textures are set to none. All right, so I just simply at the beginning of, of doing this unpause, unpause button, I set the GUI skin to clear button skin. At the end of it, I set the GUI skin to the regular skin called my skin. Okay, the next thing is I do this time this check here. If the pause count is equal to zero, I set the image uh, for the low hourglass button to its normal image. All right, the pause button image is set to the unpause image. And then finally, I set the time scale equal to one. And then if the pause count's greater than zero, I set the pause button image to the paused image, and then I set the time scale equal to zero. All right, so I've done that check. Uh, the next thing is inside of the, uh, the button that actually controls that uh, pause uh, time scale. Uh, here, here's the script for that, and simply if, if the pause count's zero, I play this thing, I play this uh, pause sound, and if it's not zero, then I do something else. I play a different sound, and then I increment the pause count. And then finally, if the pause count goes greater than one, I loop the pause count back to zero. And so the effect of that is, you get kind of a two-state button, where you hit pause, now the pause count is set to one. If I click this again, the pause count will be greater than, than one, and then I'll know to set it back to zero. So you get kind of a two-state thing here. Okay, so that seems pretty easy, but there's a few things you have to be aware of. Now let's create a, a I have here a label that shows some diagnostic stuff. And I've created a variable here called my count. And I've just gone here, I've, I've got this GUI label here that just shows a bunch of diagnostic stuff that I can comment or uncomment at any time. And let me comment that out so you'll see what happens. So I just have the my count variable and I'm going to increment the my count variable every frame and you will see what happens. Okay, so we run the program and you'll see that up here the my count variable is running and when I pause, hit the pause button, everybody freezes but the my count variable, no matter what I do, it just keeps running. So what I need to do, instead of just incrementing this variable wherever I feel like, 
I should wrap that inside of a check here. So what I do is I say, if the time scale is greater than zero, only then should this variable increment. So anytime you have variables that you need to not increment when the game is paused, you should probably uh, encase them in a check like this. Make sure that the time scale is greater than zero. Could say time scale equal to one, but there may be a case where you want the time scale to only be like 0.5, or maybe you want to be two or three or whatever. So now that I have, oh wait, I have to save this first. Okay, you'll see the little asterisk up here. It means that I have not saved that script yet. Okay, so now when we run it, you'll see the count is running, and then when I pause, the count stops. Let me move it over here. You can see better. And then when I unpause, the count runs again. Okay, exactly what I want, wanted in this case. Okay, the, the last thing I want you to be aware of in this, here is the script I have attached to the camera. As you can see here, the camera moves no matter what's going on in the game world. If I pause, the camera moves. When I drag the mouse, if I unpause, it, uh, it still moves, which is exactly what I want because I need to be able to see the rest of the field even if the game is paused. So here's a script I call RTS Camera that I attach to my main camera object. And if you want to go ahead and pause this video at any time and look at the script and copy this down or whatever, basically I got this off of uh, the uniforms and I kind of modified it a little bit. But originally, I have this variable ca called camera speed, which actually determines the speed of the camera being dragged around the scene, uh, which is determined by this bit of script here. Uh, because originally it was using, instead of a, a, a speed variable, it, it was using kind of like a, you know, time dot delta time, I believe, or something like that. It was using the internal time clock of Unity to control the speed of the camera. And, of course, when I set the time scale equal to zero, there was no change in the time, and so the camera would, would run out of gas and just stop. So, in this case, I just took the easiest way out, which was I just created my own speed variable, and then I can set to whatever I want based on whatever kind of time scale I need. So uh, that's it. Um, time scale, setting it to zero will pause your game. Setting it to one will resume the game at normal speed. Uh, make sure that you go ahead into your scripts and that you, you know, in fact, check for the time scale being a certain, uh, you know, over zero if you want to have uh, kind of like your, your variables pause at the same time as everything else. Also be aware inside of this script, for example, for the camera. Be aware that if you use anything like time.delta time or different time scale things that depend on the time scale, then just be aware that they're going to be affected as well by setting the time scale equal to something other than one. Hope that helps you out.